don't have a water. Oh, it's not normal. I know, I have a can. I feel kind it's of lost normal. without a water. <laughs> you just have a water and a coffee. It's like the standard thing. I don't have it, though. All right, let's get right into it. That's, that's right. That's about what the news has been this week. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, um. Just oh. events in general. What? Because we went camping last week. Yes, we did. We took did. the family and tried to leave them up there, but they found their way back. They followed, <laughs> man. It's like this would not stop. Somehow they're running faster than we're driving. <laughs> But while we were up there, what do you got for me? So, I just sent it to you. All right. There's a TikTok uh, recently, apparently, recently of a podcast by Alex Jones recently. He's doing something with uh, Stephen Crowder now. Nice. Him, the conservative twins. I think there's like two other names. They're actually doing this whole like kind of, you know how... Ben Shapiro has the Daily Wire. Yeah. Like, he owns that with, um, um, I don't, no, I don't think Charlie Kirk does that, but, uh, what's his name? Can, not Candace Owens. Uh, uh, yeah, she, she actually does, she's on the Daily Wire. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, that did What is a Woman? Yeah, Matt Walsh. Yeah, Matt Walsh, she, like, yes. they're, they're all there. Well, I guess, uh, Steven Crowder is now organizing, like, this super group. Nice. <laughs> of... Uh, whatever with Alex Jones, conservative twins, and there's a couple other ones. They just well, had an announcement like a week or so ago, and I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "Alex Jones," I could see, but it was funny because he was on the announcement. And you know how Alex Jones is always over the top, and he yeah. just kind of steals everything he's on. Yeah. But then the, uh, the conservative twins were like, "That's like, it's cool to see them like rise." But I was like, I didn't see them doing something with somebody else because they're very much. They don't really tour with other big comedians no. like most comedians do like they well, no, that's much, it though they, they, they pretty much do their own thing no 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 i think the misconception and i hear it the way you say it the way you just described it the big misconception is what the conservative <laughs> what the conservative twins come across as is like a political podcast but they tour with comedians they don't tour with other speakers or people who do podcasts whether it be in a joking manner or anything like that that are of a political nature no, I mean when they do their like comedy tours, they have like comedians. Yeah, but it's like the same group. You know how like Joe Rogan, and all, they all tour with all different names a lot. But it, it's there's like a large group of comedians that but always tour. It. Like they might switch out names here and there, but that's is this large tour. And then there's like the island, um, the island boys. Acts. <laughs> I want, I didn't want to say that. That's the first thing that pops into my mind too. <laughs> No, but like island the, boy. <laughs> the islands Please that die. kind of do their own thing, and conservative twins are kind of like that because they have maybe one or two names that they tour with, seemingly anyway. Maybe I'm wrong, <clears throat> but seemingly, and that's it. Which whatever, but I did. I <clears throat> going back, I didn't really peg them as doing something with like a whole other group of political anything. Okay, really. now I see where you're coming from. But I was like, all right, that's cool. Because so, it's all, like, to me, that's all pop culture. That's what this whole thing is. This whole war is on pop culture now. So, back to what I was talking about real quick. So, right. Alex Jones, he's talking on, like, his podcast, or he's doing a uh, speech of some sort. Any idea whose it is? Or Well, I sent it to you, if you want to oh, take a look right. at it real right, quick while I describe it to you. So, he talks about how he's in contact with a couple of government officials. And apparently... What did you send it on? TikTok. Okay. Apparently, there's... By this December, we're going to be back into the COVID lockdown. I heard rumors of things of that nature, but... Starting in September, they're going to start rolling out the policies and shit like that. And apparently, Alex Jones, at one point in that video, makes a remark. He found out about this Tuesday. On, uh, he found out about this on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Finally, gets a hold of a go his one government contact, and they're like, "Yeah, we just found this out yesterday." So it'd be on a Wednesday. So here's Alex Jones with this privy information on a Tuesday, and the government's not finding out till the very next day. And then he's reaching out to them. Hey, have you heard anything about this? Where'd you hear it? He's like, "Well, is there any validity?" Well, we we just heard about this yesterday. So he's finding all this information on a Tuesday. Finally, gets a hold of some government contacts that he has, and they're saying they find out they're finding this information out on a Wednesday. 
But apparently we're looking right down the barrel of another COVID lockdown because of the new variant. Yeah, I I mean, like I said, I, I think it's been tongue-in-cheek amongst a lot of people in the whole community yeah. that just talk about any kind of bullshit like this. Mm. It's like, well, there's probably another lockdown coming up. Oh, yeah. Herpetocephalitis is going to be rampant. I, 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 <laughs> I can't really... I can't really jump on that bandwagon just yet, but mm-hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't be shocked if it happened again. I really wouldn't be, sadly. Really wouldn't be. Ugh. But you know, it would be kind of stupid to do something like that because this is really COVID was the silver lining was so many people became privy to everything going on and how backwards for lack of a better term the government treats its people yeah like it's been so apparent over uh, the last couple of years and it would just seem kind of foolish to me that they would do something again to where it would just rise everyone's tensions against the government at the same time it's caused a massive amount of division throughout the united what, states okay but what better way to stir up the pot and cause more confusion than to throw everybody back into a lockdown where now what's the most we can do spread and share the information we already have not learn anything new and go back to basically start the fight all back over be accused of misinformation yep <laughs> that's and what now with everything going on you know they could then sit there and say, well, all these new rules that we put in, all these new stipulations, all these new policies, we, we, we can interfere. So now anything, despite how outlandish it might be, if they want it gone or they don't want it being talked about, they can label it in some connective manner to misinformation of a sort. That's saying the reason I brought misinformation up that term is remember last week, the last time we did the show, I was talking about the last TikTok I put up that got um, uh, removed for community guideline violation. Oh, yeah. I went on, and it finally has a thing in the bottom that says, for misinformation. I'm like, fuck, what fucking misinformation? Like, Yeah, we didn't miss... We just stated what we had heard. Yeah, it, it wasn't any kind of misinformation. It, it wasn't even misinformation. It was general fact. It says QAnon. It was the, the, the Sound of Freedom movie was written before QAnon was a thing. Yeah factual information and i got struck down for misinformation <laughs> i was like what are you talking about where to go tiktok all right i guess no but going all the way back i i i yeah i just think it would be kind of foolish to rile everyone up like that because like i Why said th- there's division more so than ever in america at least seemingly more so than ever but also but- at the same time more people, less people trust the government probably than ever before. Okay. So that's a double-edged sword. Okay, but let me ask you this. Is it really so outlandish to try to pull another wool-over-the-eyes effect? What have I been joking about coming next summer? Oh, God. What, 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 what have I been talking about going these things going down next summer because of the elections coming up that they're going to sit there and say hey we did that gas prices i've made oh. many oh, of yeah, remarks yeah. about you wait i can't wait till next summer when yeah, gas but prices they do that drop. they do that with every election cycle both sides so, do that so is it with everything going on in the news Actually, i can't even say that cuz the last 4 years it really it's been pretty apparent but with everything going on is it really outlandish to say that our current administration won't enact something that where they can grant emergency uh, methods for voting mm. or, hey, you know, we had a lockdown six months later, come summer. Hey, we're opening everything back up. See, because we did everything right. We told you this would be safe and nobody died because... Well, now look actually, at the great we did. Don't you want to keep us where we are? Because look at everything we did. Our gas prices are down. We reopened up everything again. Business is booming. You said that they're planning on doing this next year. Is in like calendar year? Or are you no, talking about this like September? 
like in a month. Like September, they're going to, according to the, the, TikTok, the TikTok video of Alex Jones, it talks about beginning to roll out these new things going on in September and then the full lockdown kicking in back in December. See, that wouldn't make sense to me then. It still wouldn't make sense. Because elections start in a year. Correct. Now, if they did this a year from this coming September, like in 13 months, then it would make sense. Because then everyone would really? be past the, oh, we've been in lockdown for a year. Because what happened the last time they did the lockdown? Who did that benefit in the lockdown? That benefited the Democrats in the lockdown. Because most big cities vote Democrat, right? Yeah. When they lock down, what they do for most of these lockdowns, mail-in ballots and ballot stuffing, ballot harvesting, that would make more sense if they did this, say, two months outside of the election. Because everyone's like, oh, shit, we're in lockdown again. And not a year in where they have lockdown fatigue and they're like, I'm fucking done with this so like we were last time. What did I say in the beginning? It's going to go one of two ways. They're either going to do it like, oh, look, we're going to do it because they want to win the vote because look how great they are or because they want to grant emergency methods of voting or something like that is what I said. Mm -hmm. I literally said that. But that's still a year, over a year so out. So we were in lockdown for how many months the first time? Before the elections? Twenty six. 19 to 20? It was March. 21 or whatever it was? March. We were in lockdown for over a year. It was... No, actually, it was right at the beginning of the pandemic was the last one. Right at the, yeah, the beginning. It was 2019. And, and it we, carried into almost 2021. It, it wasn't until it was, what, March 13th or 16th, something like that, that we actually went in full lockdown. But it was right at the beginning of the whole pandemic but they start, when and then, the elections were. And then when did that fully get lifted? March of twenty March of twenty twenty was the official beginning of the lockdown. Right. When did that get lifted? I think it was last February or something like that. It's almost a year. Yeah. So No, it was two and a half years. Two and a half years of full lockdown? Relatively, yeah. And they start I mean they started to lift things here and there like what, yeah, a year so, after or whatever. Like I said, but like, it, yeah, but what I'm I'm not talking about like how long they're in or how long. I mean, we could be in a lockdown for ten years. Yeah, that's not the point. The point is, is at the end of that two, like in the first few months of the of oh, our lockdown. lockdown well, no one really questioned it. It wasn't until like some inconsistencies started to pop up. Like, okay, so we can. We can we have a curfew at nine o'clock. Like COVID just fucking is like ah, uh, I'm coming out now. I'm working night shift, and we all have to go inside. And oh, we can go out to a dinner, but you have to wear a mask if you stand up. Like COVID can't go below six fucking feet, and like you know, or I'm safe, or <laughs> I'm five nine, or um, oh, uh, fitness centers and gyms have to be closed, but um, if bars. you sell alcohol, bar not bars, but liquor stores, that they can stay open, like. Like what, alcohol's not twenty or the COVID's not twenty one, so they can't go inside. Fuck it. Like there was so many inconsistencies. People started after like three, four, five months. They started to become like, what the fuck is going on here? Whereas like we go a year in, that's when people start to get fatigue. I mean, suicide rates is the highest it's ever been. What in twenty twenty two? It was forty nine thousand four hundred, whatever. It was almost fifty thousand people. That was from fatigue. But in that first few months, no one questioned anything. So going back, if they do this now, it's just this early, it'll be no one will question anything, maybe. I mean, actually, probably a lot of people will question it, but you won't have so much unrest probably now. And then a year later, people are going to be just beyond pissed. Or on the flip side, just popped into my head, arguing my own point, people are just going to be completely in Complacent. civil rest or unrest now. And then a year and a half later, they're going to just be beaten down like whatever. Just fucking. <laughs> it's like the, that typical, like, uh, what is it? Um, what's the cover that Disturbed did of uh, Land of Confusion? It's just like the cartoon line of people Sound walking, of punching. No, Land of Confusion. This is the oh, world. Like, we, yeah. Yes. So they yes. Just, like everyone Genesis. Just, just, everyone's in a fucking line just like punch their card and do whatever and not ask uh, questions. They covered Genesis. 1984. So, I mean, I guess it could go either way. The year we were born. Or, or, I'm, it's just all bullshit. And none of it will happen. <laughs> thing is fucking crossed, man. <laughs> I mean, it's at the part now, a point now where... It, you Half have to, this shit It is, could be fucking anything. We made jokes. We fucking, we predicted shit. Joking, tongue in cheek. I know. And we were predicting shit. I know. It, yeah. God. You know what else I predicted? 
which the is frogs fucking are gay. St- st- <laughs> that wasn't a prediction. That was actually a half truth, though. It was not really gay. They weren't frogs, but, but they were definitely gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or they weren't gay, but they were definitely frogs. Wait, wait. I mean, there's something. I don't know. <laughs> no, when uh, I'm going to skip down this list just because I brought that up. All right. I um, the Maui burning thing. Yeah, Hawaii Maui, on fire. Maui burning down. There's a whole bunch of things that went along with this. So we were at camp. There was two big things that really dropped when we were at camp. One of them is Maui burning. We were at camp, and as I think it was the Sunday before we left, I just popped on my phone. I got we had like one bar service sometimes up there, and I popped on. I saw a headline and was like, "Oh wow!" So when we got back, I just kind of browsed later that night, just looking at news. Because I knew we weren't doing a show, so it wasn't, like, on the top priority of my list. Mm. And I see it. And then the next morning at work, it's just all over the place. I'm like, oh, wow. So I'm listening to it. And someone brings up a point, like, oh, you know, all these people in Maui are displaced. And Oprah conveniently owns, like, 900-plus acres of land. I I think she owns, actually, over 100 acres now. She bought, like, another 10 or 20 acres, like, in the last year or two. She owns all this land, and people are making comments. Oh, is she gonna like harbor them there and like feed them, and, like help them out? I'm like, oh yeah, good point. Probably not, but so there was that uh, point brought up, and then also there was someone brought this up, and I have to every time I hear things like this, I have to double check it because I can't. Sometimes I find things where I'm like, well, that's not really true, and other times like this one is like it is true. It was 2017 or 2018, Hawaii. Maui specifically, they were doing a rezoning of residential and commercial areas. And the commercial areas wanted to rezone some of the land to expand into what are right now the residential areas, or at the time, well, technically still now. And it was struck down. So it, um, it clearly didn't happen. So the residential areas or uh, commercial areas couldn't expand. Well, one of the things that popped up when they were fighting these fires is there were a lot of firefighters that went to draw water from hydrants. They were all shut off. Water sources, a lot of places around the island were shut off. Kind of strange. So I'm at work and I hear this, these kind of things hmm. and I'm just popped into my mind. I'm like, you know, it'd be kind of, and I'm, even to myself, I'm like, it's kind of a conspiracy theory, whatever, but like, it would be kind of odd if like this was all a plan to remove the residents from the island and push them to the mainland so they can buy it up. Like, so companies could buy, and I mentioned to it to a couple of people I work with, I was like, well, it'd be something, and they come in and like buy it up, the land that these residents own at a fraction of the price, be like, listen, it's expensive to build in Hawaii because you have to import all the wood, import oh, yeah. everything. It's expensive to build there, and it's like a top uh, tourist uh, attraction. So it'd be cheaper for them to come in. We'll give you your beachfront property that has been in your family for whatever, 100 years. We'll give you a quarter million dollars for it, even though it's worth one point whatever. Just throwing numbers out. You take the cash, and you go wherever, back to the mainland, and we'll take it off your hands, we'll clean it, whatever. And they're in a position right now, but so if they lost their houses, what I'll do you do? Good. Do I stay here and try to figure out what FEMA or whoever's going to, what they're going to do to help us? Or do I take the cash and go start anew? Go on, put some money in. Run. Yeah, puts ooh, them in a position. Ooh. So I thought of that and I'm like, well, eh, maybe not, whatever. Two days later. <laughs> <laughs> Two days later, I go on and I'm looking around at news. And sure enough. So companies are trying to buy up <laughs> the land that these people bought. So this is from CBS News. Hawaii pledges to protect Maui homeowners from predatory land grabs after wildfires. Hmm. Uh, it says, as the ongoing response to last week's devastating wildfires ramps up um, on Maui, the Hawaiian governor has vowed again to work with government officials to prevent residents from falling prey to opportunistic and potentially predatory offers to buy their land. Let's see. Officials previous, previously estimated about 2,200 structures, most of them residential, were impacted by the fires, which tore through parts of West Maui and the island's inland upcountry region. Uh... 
and hit Laenia, a commercial and cultural center, particularly hard, with the governor suggesting last week that at least 80% of the historic coastal town had been decimated. Oh. What also popped up with this whole fire was, I guess, two or three years ago, there was a proposition made that one of the Hawaiian islands, I don't know if it was Maui, but one of the Hawaiian islands had made a statement they wanted to become the first island that was 100% eco-friendly, electric. And then evidently space lasers came down and burnt the, <laughs> burnt the island up. That was a whole other conspiracy that, that was set by lasers. That one I can't get behind. That one, I'm, there's nowhere near enough evidence for me to jump on that bandwagon. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if Dr. Evil is doing this, but maybe, maybe not. What is fishy is the fact that water lines were shut off so they couldn't fight the fires. Yeah. That's odd. And then, like I said, opportunistic. And Big business news, comes in yeah. and be like, hey, uh, we'll do this. And it, either you know, a business would come in, buy it for dirt cheap, and build, or... They could come in, buy it for dirt cheap, like, say, a medium Tough. business, and then sell it for a ridiculous amount to a big business, say, Starbucks. So, so Starbucks can have a Starbucks across from a Starbucks. Kind of like the Stewart's across from the Stewart's up in Johnstown. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Or the Stewart's up the road from the Stewart's in Fort Plain. Yeah. You know. And Starbucks across from Starbucks is a real thing, too. That's... <laughs> Yeah, it happens. See, I made that, I don't want to say prediction, but just one of those, going back to what you said, you know, we make predictions on this and just kind of say something tongue in cheek. That was just something that popped into my head. I was at work. I'm like, huh. And then a couple days later, I'm like, I fucking knew it. I knew it. We are good at this. Yeah, but again, it's always like bullshit things. I know. It can't be shit we need. (laughs) We've talked about winning the lottery a bunch of times. None of us have fucking done that. I don't really play it, though. I (laughs) so I can't. (laughs) Neither do I. We should do a pool someday. <laughs> no, but... Uh, yeah, so that was one of the big things that happened. Hmm. Oh, and apparently, too, this had popped up. I don't know if there's any truth behind this. This is straight from TikTok and... Uh, TikTok? <laughs> but people were starting to claim that not only with these businesses coming in and buying up this property that had been destroyed, but also this eviction ban from the COVID-19, from yeah. the pandemic, had been lifted. And people were starting to be evicted out of their homes, even if they weren't affected by the fire, which, though it might not have anything to do with the fire, probably a bad time to do something like that, because now you're going to get a whole bunch of eyes and people that are just going to jump to conclusions. Oh, yeah. Like, what I just said, like, oh, these businesses coming in, buying shit up. And they're evicting people. And there was a proposition to make this island all electric. It's almost like you're pushing everyone out to build this new thing. Hmm. Which I thought was interesting. that They want to send everybody to the mainland because that's the whole idea. Yeah. If they're going to buy it all up, push them to the mainland. Send them to L.A. They can be homeless there. Because that seems to be the trend, too. Is to bring in all the illegals, spread them throughout the country, and push the homeless to L.A. We'll make Skid Row and Tent City the whole thing. What do you mean? State. That's escape, L- escape from L.A. That's it. That's what, Kurt see? Russell. That's right. Kurt Russell with his magnificent mustache and half the movies Snake he's in. Bliskin. Bl- <laughs> what yes. <a> strange name. <laughs> that was a great name. <laughs> Snake, though. like That was like every action heroes name and video games from like 1985 to like you mean the metal gear series that's right <laughs> nice try <laughs> fucking trying to pull a fast one on me it was one series one franchise of like 20 games <laughs> yeah so might as well have been every freaking game <laughs> eh, no there was a handful okay yeah but at the same time that was going on going back to what we were talking about culture war. well i said the whole culture war everyone being divided and everything while we were at camp as well, the whole Oliver Anthony song, Rich Men North of Richmond, you haven't heard it. No, You I haven't have. seen it. No, I haven't. A song that in a few days went up to 17 million views. He's number one on iTunes or Apple or I, whatever. Yeah, iTunes. 
and he's i think this is like a day ago or so he was gonna break into the top 10 in the billboard 100 I literally typed ol into youtube yeah oliver anthony north of richmond yeah. i literally typed ol it's, i could have been typing how to ollie it, yeah it's fucking all over all over it blew up hold on a hawaiian shirt <laughs> that's a little weird youtube <laughs> yeah it's not listening though distraction <laughs> what do you mean why oh I don't know if I have to cut this out or not. Whatever. <laughs> Better off. Yeah. Over like overshadow it with like. Do 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 do. All right. I'll have to finish listening to this later. That's interesting. So that song blew the fuck up. Okay. All right. So you heard generally the lyrics. Yeah. Pretty much. You know what you got. What's it mean to you? From the sample I just heard, it sounds like he's like... It's not a new thing. No. Like the subject matter. The subject, the message he's trying to put across is it's like, look, you know, we got a lot of stuff we got to take care of here. Let's fix it. More or less, yeah. Yeah. It's... Yeah, that's relatively what i got out of it. i just got a simple message the working class the poor basically not the poorer because that's what the united states is now the united states is the one percent of the one percent because in the world if you make more than what thirty four thousand dollars a year you are in the one percent of the world yeah so the one percent of the one percent and then the poor because the middle class is relatively gone yeah. <laughs> extinct and then the poorer that's basically talking about the lower middle class poor and how they're just, it's just like a foot on your neck and you just try and try and try and try. And what is for a household, if you make, if the household brings in, what was it, 150 or 170,000 or it was like 185,000 a year, that was considered like above. That was considered middle class. Yeah. <laughs> Like there's upper middle. I think it's like middle is like 120 to 150. Something like that. Upper middle is like 150 to 200,000. How many people around here work one job and make 150,000? How many? So to me, that's what that is. What's strange, not really strange, I get, no, it's not really strange. It is kind of surprising, but not strange. How that song has struck so many chords with not just like country fans or metalheads, across the board, or there are reaction, Rap, punk, uh, reaction pop. compilations of you name the walk of life, and all of them are jamming to it. There's already a bunch of people like not Tom McDonald, you know who that is, right? Yeah, I know not Tom like him, is. but rappers that do that kind of thing, sampling his shit and just adding to it, not overdoing it, just adding to it, like their thoughts, what they see or how they see the whole situation, adding to it. This has caused like a fucking wave of like people that are finally like, you know what? This is bullshit. Basically, what we do, just in music format. Okay. what a whole bunch of fucking people do they just look at everything that's going on and be like this is like I'm done with this I'm done with doing this shit like, I'm just done with it that's what it is to me and the way like the line he's gotten there like our, toler our dollars are taxed to shit and everything like that like all that kind of stuff which really is like there's so many you get a thousand you make a thousand dollars a week you get what between six and seven hundred of it yeah and the rest that. is taken away okay taxes what are you gonna do and that's like the mentality now is taxes but some of those taxes are fucking crazy take this place for example the mountains there's a view tax there's a view tax because there's a mountain range back here what the fuck well, because you can see a mountain range from your house there's a fucking view tax so 
Well, here's something funny. Speaking of taxes, I'm going to have to do a lot of digging because it, it's something that I just, it, it keeps coming back to me. And I've seen too many TikTok videos. I've seen, I've heard all these experts that look more like they ate lunch out of the garbage and then sucked on a tailpipe to get their next buzz that are putting off these, I'm a tax expert, man. Right. Income tax. Mm Mm-hmm. What is the income tax? What is an income tax? What, by definition, what is income tax? What what do they take it for? No, no. What is it? What is the income tax? Let's look that up really quick. By definition, what is income but that's sort of like tax. how much they take like what's the percentage of them taking it or what is it actually used for hold on so income tax an income tax is a tax imposed on individuals or entities that's for go ahead in respect of the income or profits earned by them yeah okay income tax generally is computed as the product of a tax rate Times the taxable income. Taxation rates may vary based by, t- by type of characteristics of the taxpayer and the type of income. Right. Because it, what it's for is for like, <laughs> it, it's for paying public officials to do their job, one, so, and also public works. Yep. It, That's what it's for. So what is the, this is. So maybe know, we should cut it in half because we're not really getting the. What we're paying for. Officials, but so, we are at least getting, so, I mean, they're paving roads and shit. So, it's it's mean, funny. By definition, that was the first one. Then the very next thing you could choose is, what is the meaning of income tax in simple terms? <laughs> All right. Because my phone knows me. <laughs> income tax is a type of tax governments impose on income generated by businesses and individuals within their jurisdiction. Right. Income tax is used to fund public servants, pay government obligations, and provide goods for citizens. Right. Now, this is where I said I'm going to have to do some research. Right. And actually learn some shit. Because income tax was, if I, if I am correctly informed, income tax was originally implemented on a gains profit. Right. Not on what you generally bring in. So, let's say you start working. You generate an income. Mm -hmm. From zero to whatever. Let's say in your first year, you start your job, January 1st, December 31st, you've made $40,000. Okay. You went from a zero to a $40,000 plus. So, now you have to be taxed. Mm -hmm. Because that was money you didn't have before. Right. So the next year, let's say you make exactly $40,000 again. Mm-hmm. Now you started after taxes, let's say you went down to 30000 Right. From the year previous? From the first year. So year two, you go from 30000 you make another 40000 So now you're up to what? 70000 right? Right. What is your income tax supposed to be based on? Should still be a 40000 No. Wrong. Technically, you only profited $10,000 because you got to remember your income, your, your out versus in. Mm-hmm. You had all these bills and all these expenditures. But you said I had 30000 left over. So I. So, no, no, no. After taxes, you took home 30000 Oh, all right. All now, right. don't forget, you also had your. I'm sorry, I missed this part. You had all your bills, okay. your fuel, all this stuff. So let's say at the end of the year, after that forty thousand, after you, have you pay ten thousand, you yeah, do you have no? Let's be realistic. That is realistic. You talk about a mortgage, you talk about car payments, multiple car payments. So, if you live no, in a family no, so house, let's be more you talk about. Te- let's be more realistic. The average mortgage is what eleven to twelve hundred dollars a month. Roughly, let's say well, dependent, but okay. let's be stupid cheap. A thousand dollars. Actually, month. no. Well, it might be anyway. Let's figure easy numbers. A thousand dollars a month. All right. That's twelve thousand dollars in the year. So out of your right. thirty thousand, after you paid that ten thousand into the government for taxes, four hundred down on the principal, <laughs> ten thousand, you're down to thirty. Right. You just paid twelve thousand in, ta- in in mortgage. So now you're down to eighteen thousand. Right. Now let's say you have the average car payment is five hundred bucks a month. That's six thousand dollars in a year. Out of that eighteen thousand, you're now down to twelve thousand. Right. Now let's say your bills 
I'm talking heat, electric, and water. Let's say that comes up to, let's be real, let's just place some stupid numbers here, mm -hmm. another 500 bucks a month. Right. Now, I would fucking love that bill, trust me. If all my, my heat, my electric, and my water only cost me 500 bucks a month, I would love that. <laughs> I would fucking... Yeah, suck. move out into the country. I would suck a dick for that. That's country. Yeah. But that's... Okay, so that, once again, now that's another 6000 in the year. Right. So that 12000 is now down to 6000 mm -hmm. Average weekly grocery output, let's figure. 150 bucks. Right. So what's that? Six hundred bucks a month. Some there's people on this fucking thing that's gonna say one hundred fifty bucks. Let's do you fucking feed your family? For stupid numbers <laughs> okay, again. Okay, we'll do another five hundred bucks a month. All right, for groceries, and I yeah, I, I spend that in two fucking weeks easy. Right. So that's another fucking six thousand dollars in a year. Can I just give the crickets to my kids? <laughs> so we went from twelve thousand a year for mortgage. Right. Six thousand a year for your car. Right. You're down you it's eighteen thousand out of thirty, you're left with twelve thousand. Six thousand a year for utilities. Mm -hmm. That leaves you with six thousand. Six thousand a year for groceries. You are fucking zero. Yep. You are at zero. So right now you are back to zero. Mm -hmm. The next year you make that forty. So you, you so at the at the end of your year, right. after you paid your taxes, you should have had thirty thousand dollars left. Right. You make the forty grand a year for the next year. You're only making a ten thousand dollar profit. Right. That is all that is supposed to become taxed. Oh, okay. I get it. all right. Now it's it a sense. net gain. All right. So when you make your forty, so now you pay your tax on that thirty. Now Mind you, you're in the fucking negative, remember? So what do they do when you don't make as much the next year? You Say, don't. This has been happened to me. Like when I worked at the warehouse, there'd be one year I'd bring home 45. The next year I'd bring home 43. And then the year after that, I'd bring home 48. And the next year I'd bring home 44 or 2 or whatever. See, now that's where your taxes come into play. One year you'll get very little back in taxes. The next right. year you'll get more. So one year you might not get any. See, that's where they give you the option where do you want to put these taxes toward the next year's taxes, which fucking I don't think anybody does that. No. Because especially just living paycheck to paycheck, just having a Joe Schmo job. They're like, no, I need a boost. Yeah. <laughs> and put it on principle. I know I didn't. I'd always get it back and pay off college or I'd get it back and be like, I'm just going to put it all in my truck or whatever. So that gain of 10 is all you're supposed to be taxed on. Because once again, you went from 30 you bumped it up to making 40 because mm -hmm. you have to remember all these living expenses are coming out still. So all you are supposed to be taxed on is that additional 10,000. Now let's say the next year. So let's say you do it again, mm -hmm. 40,000, you get your tax, you get 30,000 back. You, you, you pay 10,000 into the government for taxes that next year you make 50 grand. So now you went from 30 to 50. You're only supposed to be taxed for the 20. on the 20. So, Going back, what's accepted? You said you had to uh, do research on this. Why? Because there are so many people that will sit there and say, oh, taxes are fraud, taxes are a sham, or mm -hmm. no, we got to pay these taxes. What's the income tax? Because like, I've seen TikTok videos where people have refused to pay income tax mm -hmm. at the end of the year and not gone to jail. And then when they sit there and go to a tax attorney or they go through these, ta they go through all the tax laws, they go through the courts and the battles, they end up winning because I've seen TikTok videos. And this is what I mean. I have to do my research. I actually learn the law. Yeah, because again, you're getting your news from TikTok. Tick exactly, from TikTok. These people are saying if you go into the law, into the code book, there's actually no law saying it is policy for us to pay an income tax on every bit of income we generate. I've heard that too. But that's where it comes into again with the whole 1099 with eBay and PayPal and all mm -hmm. that kind of shit. Now they're sending you if you make more than or generate more than six hundred dollars a year in PayPal or Venmo or any of those. Now you get sent a 1099 form at the end of the year during tax season because you got to pay taxes on that, which yeah. fucking 
made me furious. Well, why? Here's the thing. And that's the thing. That's the thing. You are getting charged income tax. So that I buy a Harley Davidson Electroglide for five thousand, let's say. Right. I had to register and insure that bike. When I registered that bike, I had to pay a tax on it. Right. Now I'm in the hole. I spent five grand right. to get this bike. Let's say I spend five hundred bucks to tax to, 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 to for tax titles and fees. Right. I am fifty five hundred into this bike just to be able to own it. I sell it. Let's say for four grand. Four grand. I am still in the negative. And that's what, even if you were in the positive. But but did I have to, according to that bullshit, because let's say I sold it on Facebook yeah, or you, you fucking get, you get taxed eBay. Again. I now have to pay a tax on money that I've already spent and was taxed on. See, that's what I don't understand about it. It's like, this is, for eBay, it's, you, it's fucking there's a lot shit. of people sell shit on there. Now, I'm not saying it does because there's a lot of fucking people that do there business. People, it's career. It. Yeah, it's a career. There's a lot of people, and this is what they're trying to do. But there's a lot of people out there that are just like, I just need to get rid of this shit. Yeah, and then you can't like say in Kanjo, you can only have two days twice a year where you can have a garage sale. Yeah, you can only do that. Well, a lot of people aren't gonna like. Well, I'll just hold on to this shit until next spring or whatever. It's well, I just put it on eBay and get rid of it, and that was great. But now oh. you can't because now if you make too much I money, see. I'm gonna. See. You get fucking taxed again. Not saying a fucking word. Because as soon as I make the joke, you watch. It's going to fucking happen. Oh. Can I? Should I make the joke? Yes. <laughs> How much you want to bet it'll come in the next three to five years? Three to five fucking years where you will have to go to your count, your county clerk, your town clerk or office, whatever, to get a permit to put a garage sale up. And in doing so, you have to keep a fucking record of everything you sell and how much you sell it for. I oh, all right. I was gonna say I because think now you already do. If it's not a village wide, I think you already do have to get a permit to have a garage sale. But but as far as like recording how much you make, as soon as you put in that permit, no. But boom, you get a ten ninety nine in the fucking mail. You know what's gonna happen? That's what's gonna happen. Is once they eventually get rid of cash, paper money, like tangible currency. Mm. Once they actually get rid of that, you, everyone, you know how you can for cheap too. You can get those uh, phone scanner things, the things that plug oh, in your yeah. phone, and you could just like use a card. Yeah, everyone's gonna have that. So when you do garage sales, it's all gonna be tracked anyway. People like, that's do that. Whole, yeah. that's the whole pur- purpose of the CBDC. So there, there, there are people that have the tap one. It's like a eye. It's like a little thing that plugs into your iPhone. Yeah. You literally just touch your chip to the card. Yeah. And it shows up on the phone. Paid. I mean, yeah. Your phone does that. You can do that with the phone tap or whatever scan with the phone. So you do that right. At the I store. could Venmo, Cash App, whatever there are. You twenty bucks right now. I we don't even have to touch phones. Yeah. That's what it'll be. Oh, scan QR code. No, I mean Venmo. like when you're at with the store. When, when you're at the store. And oh yeah. You have your phone. You don't have a card or something. Tap on to pay. You. Yeah. I mean, like, like I said, that that shit's coming. But going back to what you just said, that's all in line. So, it, I mean, you say it's a tongue in cheek, all it'll come true, but it's already like set in motion. But in the next two to five just years, how quick? Th- that's what people it might start even getting. be a year. You don't know. Ten ninety nines. People are gonna start getting ten ninety nines in the mail for garage they, sales. <laughs> yep. Oh, I sold that fucking five thousand dollar toolbox for fifty cents. <clears throat> well, let's check your digital account. Fuck. Yeah, see, yeah, see, you can't even do it right now with cash. You could do that. Oh, you could cash. you could list it right now. It's like, oh, I sold it for a dollar. I mean, people used to do that. Remember with used cars? You go, oh, could you just write down for a hundred bucks? You can go below a hundred dollars. Just uh, write down. Now it's five hundred. Whatever. You can't go below five hundred. Inflation. Mm-hmm. Thank, thanks, Biden. <laughs> but <laughs> sorry, I'm going to give you a thumbs up. Yeah, whatever. Sometimes he gets confused with his fingers. He's My- he's new. He doesn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but. My you, hands have self-diagnosed Tourette's. Before you'd sell, you'd sell a car for three grand, but you'd write the receipt as a hundred dollars, and then go down and just have to pay a hundred dollars. And you know, everyone at the fucking county clerk and everything. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, whatever. You gotta. It's it's 2003. I remember. You know what's funny? Like, I've that. never seen anybody sell a car for more than a hundred dollars. I've been no, here for I remember 15 years. My senior year. My senior year. <laughs> uh, spring of '03. I was turning 19 that year. I remember a buddy of mine in high school, his parents, they were given a car by a family friend. Right. And it was like a 2002 Honda Civic with like 500 miles. Like, no, it was almost 1,000 miles on it. Well, they gave it to this kid in my class. And he was actually a friend of mine. Only 1,000? 
Yeah. Jeez. Because it was, it was, I think it was an elderly family member. They bought the car, paid it off. Something happened. Medically restricted them from driving. Oh. Well, the <laughs> they car lost was, their eyes. <laughs> the car was bought and paid for. Right. So they're like, well, give it to so and so as a graduation gift. So they did. <laughs> He's driving around a Buick. I, re- I <laughs> remember. Person vehicle. I remember because we went to the DMV. We skipped school and went to the DMV. <laughs> we and we, we go in and the bill of sale. The lady looks at it, looks at the registration, looks at the title, <laughs> looks at the bill of sale, looks at the DMV form. They have it. And just like, <laughs> really, what? Mm-hmm. The title says it doesn't even have a thousand miles on it yet. Yep. Yeah, it's weird. One penny per mile. <laughs> <laughs> and they're selling it to you for 150 bucks. You bought it for 150 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, and here's the. Ah. <laughs> uh, now it's 500 bucks. 500 bucks. Is that what you did with your... Uh, yeah, I know. What? What? With what? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, buddy. You walk down there, it's like 100 bucks. It's got to be 500. This is a fucking prison. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is a fucking prison in a state of bullshit. Boof- on planet, <laughs> fuck this. I'm going to boof the keys out of here. <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah, but you're going all the way back. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Oliver Anthony and taxes and... To me, that's what that's what the song's about. Yeah, <laughs> <Going> taxes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right though. It, it, I, I see that. I see definitely see that. But this this coalition. is like it's not a left right thing. Black white Republican Democrat Asian, liberal conservative. No, you can't do black and white anymore. Just black and white. You have to listen to them all, buddy. It's I, the fucking Crayola Rainbow. Yeah, whatever it is. You. It's not about any of that. No, because it's, really it's about like really like. But I'm sure Oprah, or no, uh, Whoopi had her fucking say, it's about the racism and the dark and I'm a Karen. Yeah, I don't, she is, her name is Karen. Oh God. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Fucking hens cackling. I don't know about all that. The Washington Post, I can't even say the liberal or left-wing media. Well, this one is left-wing, it's Washington Post, but, but they're already starting to, try to weasel their way into this song and create divide and be like, oh no, it's this and it's that. Oliver Anthony and the mainstreaming of conspiracy theories. <laughs> the sudden success of the singers Rich Men, Rich Men North of Richmond, coupled with other pop culture gains, marks a huge crossover movement for far-right ideas and mainstream entertainment, experts say. <laughs> Whoever the experts are. Probably The View. <laughs> Those are their experts. <laughs> Just a fucking cackling chickens on stage. If you had asked someone at the beginning of the month whether they had heard of, let alone listened to, Oliver Anthony, you would probably would have gotten a blank stare in return. Now the singer from Farmville, Virginia, with a fiery beard and big voice is everywhere because of his viral song, Richmond, North of Richmond. Since its debut on August 8th, Anthony's performance of Richmond, North of Richmond, shared on the YouTube channel uh, Radio West Virginia, I'm assuming, or Radio WV, has been viewed more than 17 million times, seven, yeah, 17 million times and became the number one song on the U.S. iTunes charts, according to Billboard, <laughs> Billboard. The song is now on pace to enter the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100 uh, next week. This feat is virtually unheard of for a newcomer like Anthony, an unsigned talent without any substantive following or known industry connections. With that, the whole industry connections, he apparently, and this is on his his actual channel popped up in my feed because I'm sure it's fucking on everyone's feed. And I was mm-hmm. like, all right. So I went on his feed and I was looking at some of his videos and he put one video up where he's talking about two of them that st- stood out to me. One, he was talking about um, different uh, companies offering him contracts. Obviously, they're going to try to capitalize on that. He's turned them down. $8 million contract here like two million there turned them all down specifically because he says i don't want other people to own my things like he just he yeah, wants to have they can bury 100 percent control not even bury it they just own it like most musicians out there especially in like the 70s or like 70s 80s and 90s <clears throat> you'd sign a big contract 
and they'd be like, are you going to make a hundred million? But the expenses that came along with it and the percentage you're paying out, it's like, you're not making the hundred million. And not to mention that these companies own the music you put out or a large percentage. So you put out an album saying it makes a hundred million dollars. You might get out of a sale record sale of what was it back then? Like $15, we'll say you might see 33 cents. So, and that's not like an exaggerated number. That's just this random number of like, was yeah. it 17 or $18 they were back then? You'd see literally like You'd 30, see a fraction 30 of a cent. Yeah. You wouldn't see much. He didn't want any of that. He just wants to own it. He just wants to perform. Plus the fact he said this song, it's not, it's not so much like, a, like an anthem. I mean, everyone's using it as an anthem, but he said, <clears throat> this is me just saying what everyone else is thinking. Like he goes like I'm not something special. Like the guy's super humble, which is refreshing. But he's like, this is not me like saying anything super special or unique or anything. Which what I just said at the beginning of this is just I'm putting it out there in song form. It just so happens to be connecting with a lot of people across the board. Yeah, rightfully so. The other video, which I thought was just a nice touch, he plays at a farmer's market a lot. I guess the week before this blew up, he's like he goes, I'd play it like this and. It, or he, it, there's a video of him playing there. He goes, last week there was like 20 people here. And oh. so like between 20 and 60 people would watch him. He had 6,000 people there <laughs> the week after it blew up. All singing the lyrics to that song. I was like, man, that's got to be something else. Like, that has got to be a trip. Oh. I was like, good for him, though, for doing that shit. Yeah. But going all the way back, of course the media is, is going to get a hold of it and just try to <laughs> just torch it and be like, oh, it's a right-wing conspiracies and this and that. Another thing is there's another article that tried to pen it as, oh, that, <laughs> it is this one, fat phobic. Because there's a line in it that says, if you're 300, uh, 300 pounds. Five foot three and 300 pounds, some of that. For chocolate bonbons. Like if you're on welfare, you can get chocolate bonbons. You're 503, 300 pounds, whatever the thing is. It says viral. This is from The Independent. Viral right wing anthem by country singer Oliver Anthony branded offensive and fat phobic. <laughs> a viral song by country singer Oliver Anthony has been criticized for offensive lyrics while being praised by numerous and prominent right wing figures. The song entitled Richmond North of Richmond has amassed more than 11 million views at this time on YouTube in under a week and has risen to number one in iTunes country chart. Prior to the song's release, da, 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 the lyrics involve a number of complaints about politicians, welfare recipients, and taxes. Fans have hailed the song as an ode to the American working class with right-wing media personalities such as Dan Bongino, Matt Walsh, and country singer John Rich praising the track on social media. Quote, I've been selling my soul working all day, overtime hours for bullshit pay. However, some of the other lyrics have prominent criticism from listeners. Lord, we've got folks in the street, ain't got nothing to eat, with the obese milking welfare, goes on one line. Well, God, if you're five foot three and you're 300 pounds, taxes ought not to pay for the bags of fudge rounds. I don't think that's really controversial. <laughs> I just think that's... No, no, what he's saying in that line right there, what he's saying is... Is what... Oh, my God. We've all fucking seen. Oh, my God. I've got a story for you. I'm sure everybody does. No, no, no. Go ahead. That happened today. Oh, oh that's even better. <laughs> Went to the local grocery store. Mm -hmm. I was unaware of this. Trice popper? No. No. Oh. <laughs> Rave a knot. Oh, Okay. Okay. I was unaware that you could do this, because I almost said something, but I'm glad I bit my tongue. Yeah. You want to be a right? <laughs> anyway. So this he she looking thing, he she looking girl, mm -hmm. is wearing a hoodie, pants, and all that shit. Goes up with this tatty looking, maybe twenty year old, scruffy, nerf hurting looking motherfucker. Right. In her arms. Star Wars reference. Hell yeah. <laughs> In her arms are three fucking 12 packs of Bush Light. Right. Okay, cool. Whatever. You're getting beer, you're getting beer. In his arms, God bless him. Good old fucking red blooded American right there. <laughs> he had himself four six packs of Pregnancy Mountain Dew. tests. Wait, what? <laughs> Pregnancy tests. <laughs> yeah. Four six packs of Mountain Dew. Right. 
Oh, you'd laugh at that one harder than the pregnancy test. All right. No, but seriously, he had four fucking six packs of Mountain Dew in his arms. Right. They walk up to the line together. Obviously, they're together. Right. Puts the stuff on the belt. Goes on up. She rings it all up. It's like fucking 50 something dollars. Mm-hmm. EBT? Mm-hmm. Mm. Girl goes, oh, I'm sorry. You can't use that. She goes, what do you mean? She goes, you cannot buy alcohol with an EBT card. Right. She goes, but we've bought this stuff before. She goes, I could sell you the Mountain Dew <laughs> on EBT, right. but I can't right. sell you the alcohol. She goes, but we've bought it before. She goes, if you want to take cash out and then buy it, be my guest, but I'm not telling you you can do that. Plus, I need to see your IDs. Well, the one guy's like, oh, uh, I can't. She goes, I can't sell you this stuff together. Right. So what do these fuckers do? The girl picks up the beer, moves back a little bit. The guy takes the EBT card because she leaves it on the fucking belt. Mm -hmm. Takes up the EBT card, moves the soda down, hands the EBT card, EBT girl, EBT card to the girl. This happened today at about four forty-five. Hands the EBT card to the girl. Ching ching, would you like cash back with that? Oh yeah, how much? Oh, it's forty. Okay, yeah, forty. Girl takes out. You could take. I didn't know this. I'll explain in a minute. Takes the card, takes the cash, puts it back on the belt, picks up the Mountain Dew, backs up, switch places. Girl puts the beer on the counter, takes the card, puts it in her pocket, takes the cash, rings it up, hands the cash, gets the beer, gets the change, and fucking leaves. So explain. Apparently, there are forms of EBT. I was unaware of this. Where you can actually pull cash out. Now I don't know if pull that, cash out of what of an account. Uh, oh yeah, EBT account. That's right. Because all right. Because you are gifted. Stupid so much, question. You are gifted so much money a month. Now I don't know like. <laughs> I, I, the terminology gifted so much money a month. Okay, because they don't fucking earn it. <laughs> Fuckers are bit those motherfuckers weren't working. Those motherfuckers are walking out of the parking lot with a fucking putting the smokes in their fucking mouths. Obviously they don't have a fucking car. And go ahead and tell me, oh, they have jobs. They could just be down on the luck. Motherfucker, these were career people. Trust me. All of you that are watching, the few of you that might watch, know what a career fucking system put worker is. Uh-huh. These were fucking career system workers. They kind of stick out. Especially when they know how to play that game. You you know. You ain't been in this. I fucking. I got unemployment for two fucking months between jobs. And that was fucking. Oh my God. Almost 20. Yeah. 20 years ago. Almost 20 years ago. Almost 20 fucking years ago. I went on unemployment for two months. Between two jobs. And. Till today, I was unaware that there are different types of EBT assistance right. and cards. Some you can do that with. You can take money out and do what, buy whatever you need or use the money to pay bills or whatever. I don't fucking know. You know, maybe you should use it to pay your bills, you not buy fucking alcohol. That's That's got to be how it's done then, for paying bills. For paying bills. It's like, well, all right, do this, but only pay, use it for bills. That's the only thing I can think of. So, yeah, when he sits there and makes a comment about God being 5'3 and weighing 300 pounds, you are, the tax dollars shouldn't be buying your fucking bonbons or your fudge rounds. No fucking offense. He's fucking right. It's not fat phobic. It's fucking lazy phobic. Mm, well, who's afraid of a lazy person? I don't know. Richmond, North of Richmond isn't. Oh, all right. Listeners voice their criticism on the song uh, of the song on X, the social media platform for all I know is Twitter. It isn't. Some ode to the working class, one person wrote. It's a reactionary tune that perpetuates fat phobia and the classic welfare queen trope popularized by former U.S. President Ronald Reagan. It vaguely critiques the wealthy, yet directly, inaccurately blames the poor for milking the system. See, this takes one fucking line, and this is this is the problem with a lot of, across the board, social, political, take one line, focus mainly on that, blow it up to the entire problem and then completely shovel away the rest of it anything that has any kind of merit 
or substance or and factual then, content and then use this as like this is what they're doing case in point they did the exact same thing during the covid pandemic with ivermectin during oh, joe yeah. rogan's whole the laundry list of things that he took when he had uh, uh um covid it was like cpap it was um vitamin drip um Emergency like water, vitamin like D, that, like yeah, stuff, vitamin yeah. D, vitamin C's, all this stuff, and in that uh, group of supplements was ivermectin. And what the media do? They focus on ivermectin. Look, this is also an horse it's medication. An, it's an ingredient in a horse dewormer. Yes. So they it's not a horse dewormer by itself. No, it's no, because the guy that came up with the the drug won a Nobel Prize for that for people and had been administered billions of times prior. But the media took that ivermectin, focused on the horse medication, said that Joe Rogan and anybody else who brought it up was actively trying to promote promote people taking horse dewormer and then blew that story out of the water and then that's when everyone latched onto that from the left and whatever and then said look they're trying to get people to take horse medication and then subsequently because of that what happens is people that are completely not informed and don't read news all the time said what horse medication you can take that so then you get those fractions of people here and there that try horse and then what do the left-wing media do is they lock onto that story because the story they perpetuated and went we told you they're doing it look what's happening that's what they do that's the same thing they're trying to do with this song luckily to this point anyway the masses seem to have learned their lesson from covid this is why going all the way back when they said when you were saying oh they're going to do it again i'm like i don't know if if they're that stupid to do it because people are just fed up with it already, people across the board and all walks of life are latching onto this song and be like, you know what? Yeah. A lot of people are commenting on this song. I've seen it over and over. This is the spark that starts a revolution. This is like what's going on. Like, I agree and disagree. Revolution, sure. But I don't think this song is the spark that starts the revolution. I think this song is a result of a revolution already happening. I think people's idea and perception of revolution is what it was 200 years ago. Boots on the ground. Let's get our muskets at fire. It ain't that. Revolution now is pop culture. Revolution now is communicating on social media. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. It's not fighting with arms and whatever with your neighbors. Revolution now is just knowledge, information. This song is a result of everyone already going, again, silver lining with COVID. This is bullshit something's clearly fucking wrong and it's not just a small group of conspiracy theorists now from 10 20 years ago screaming about you're getting fucked now it's across the board now admittedly there are a lot of people out there that don't really know what they're reading and don't really know what they're looking into and they just kind of grab onto space lasers starting fires to push everyone out of hawaii let's dial that back a second and let's look at what's actually going on well, before we space lasers <laughs> yeah just before we start jumping on those crazy bandwagons Let's look at it. It was a laser but, blaster. <laughs> no such thing as and that. it was shot by a stormtrooper. Yeah. That's why I missed completely. He was going for the White House and just hit the Hawaii. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. it's Now everyone's across the board is kind of on the same page. And they're getting there. They're, they're reading more. And more and more people are starting to pop up with things like this. And all different sizes of shows where they're just talking about news. And either commentating like pretty much we do. Or breaking things down, and some channels out there are fantastic at doing it. I don't know where they have the time to fucking do it, to read hundreds of pages of documents. I'm like, all right, I'm going to break this down for you. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. But yeah, everyone across Seriously. the board, they're like on the same page. And it's like, all right, so people are starting to get it. But they're not fucking, this isn't a fat phobic fucking song. No, it's <laughs> not at all. I mean, it's a literally. Broken, it's a broken system phobic song. The guy's a like what a docker factory worker or some shit yeah. like that like just a blue collar guy. He's For not. Those of you who don't know what broken system phobic means, it means fear of a broken system. <laughs> he he's not like the most athletically built. No, either he's got a dad bod. So let's fucking really think about what we're saying when we say it. It's not fat phobic. It's not. Black people can say the N-word to each other and it's not considered racism. So if he's a fat guy and he's talking about fat people, it's not fat phobic. Right. God, left. 
follow your own rules and definitions. How come the left can make all these mean tweets and mean statements and everything and nobody bats an eyelash, but the minute fucking Trump does and all of a sudden it's like, you know what we should do? <laughs> we should come out with a left supporting song, get famous by their fucking... And then when they sit there and go on our YouTube channel, wait, what? Oh, fuck, we fucked up. <laughs> we never endorsed wait, no, them. No, 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 no. I didn't make that. And then... <laughs> Too late. Gotcha, bitch. Yeah, I didn't... Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so yeah, Trump mean tweets indicted a fourth yeah, time. Yeah, a fourth time. A fourth time. Did you see he went on? Uh, what was it? I saw he made a statement. Yeah, he made a statement with Maui and fucking Biden hasn't even been there. But that's a whole other thing. But he did make a statement about how they're trying to keep him tied up in court so they yep. can't campaign. Yep. Yeah. I forgot what he did it on, but I know I heard about that for RICO charges. This one, which I was like, that's fun. So here's what's interesting with the RICO charges. The judge herself said that the charges were not illegal by themselves. Hold on. But Hold on. because of the number of charges, they can be counted as a criminal enterprise. Hold on. And the really people. quick, for those of you at home who don't know what RICO is, the RICO comes from the 70s. I believe it was. Uh, I couldn't. Racketeer and Influential Criminal Organization right. Act. It was, I believe it was in the 70s. For those of you who don't know what RICO stands for. Racketeering influential criminal organizations. Yeah, charging individual or organized crime or something like that. Organized unit, whatever. But that's what RICO stands for. So continue. They're trying to bring him up on the RICO. Nineteen seventy, yeah. Yep, okay. Yeah, nineteen seventy, okay. So they're trying to bring him up on RICO charges. All right, yeah. So the judge herself said the charges are not illegal on their own. But because there's so many was there ninety Six, six or some yep. charges all together now so one of them or there's some of them questioning the 2020 outcome of the elections making false statements about election integrity in other states which that one i don't fu well most of them i don't fucking get but this one specifically if you make a statement in another state how the fuck can georgia charge you for something you said in wisconsin you can't they shouldn't be able doesn't to. doesn't fucking make sense but they are hey you know whatever Making a false statement about it, which we already covered in the yeah, Alvarez about, versus the uh, yeah, yeah we talked about it on the US, podcast, which that's fucking protected. Asking for email addresses from of public officials, and then those officials getting emails from people in his cabinet. Hey, what's this? Why is this? Questioning, asking for things. That's illegal. I mean, it's not, but it is. Hiring a forensic data team to review the results. Pretty sure that fucking goes on. Pretty sure that fucking went on in 2016 with Hillary mm -hmm. when she fucking denied the results. I'm dropping yep. a lot of F-bombs tonight. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. It really is. There's a bunch of it, too. So requesting, requesting hearings to challenge the results. You know, like, hey, I would like a legal representation and you get your legal representation. Then we can legally do this in an environment where it's all within legal <laughs> That's illegal. <laughs> and then the question is, is, is this about stopping Trump or dividing the country? Which I Stopping Trump. and I think it's both. Well, here's the thing. I don't think... This sets a precedent. Again, they're really fucking good at this. They're going after Trump, which they've been doing for a while. But what they did here was they also went after Giuliani and a bunch of his legal team. So Trump going about a legal way of questioning results and trying to investigate, did this really happen? This isn't a question of whether or not the results were valid. This is a question of I'm challenging the results legally through the legal process and I'm being charged for doing so. So now if we go about everything in the court of law, you can be charged for questioning. Kind of sets a scary precedent. Because I'm now, to be just like when the Republicans way back in, was it 2003, when they set the Patriot Act? And oh, every, yeah. Everyone was like, this is going to bite you in the ass. Lo and behold, it did 15 years or so later. This, from the Democrats' side, let's just step out of the current time frame we're in right now, 10 years down the road, and this kind of shit comes back on them. Like, you're starting something that's not fucking good for any party across the board anybody so now you're saying 
you did something and you did it legally within the you, but we don't like it so we're gonna yeah, charge you so we're it. gonna attack you that's that's they, weaponization of uh, the government uh, yeah of the legal system no it's the way it's a it's the weapon is i was literally thinking that the minute when you were going into this talking to this i immediately started thinking to myself that's fucking ironic that we were thinking about the same thing they are weaponizing our legal system but that's what it is to attack <clears throat> anybody that does not propagate or go along with their agenda yeah it's definitely weaponization I and mean, there's no other way to that's what it is. Because if that's the case, if that's the case, and be my guest, folks at home, you want to do, make the phone call, be my guest. I, ch I accept that challenge. Everything that happened in the 2020 election, there was not enough consistencies. I don't think there, I think there was a lot of invalid, invalidities, if that's a word. Invalidities? There was a lot of indiscrepancies. Indiscrepancies. Inconsistencies. I, there you go. Inconsistencies. I fully agree there was a lot of inconsistencies with the 2020 election. There was. So and right there, I just questioned it, so I should be going to court. He, oh, dude, everything we've said on this, if they keep going down this path. All right, yeah, speaking of this. So not only the precedent I just said they're setting, what they're also setting is people that supported Trump they're going after, his legal team. The next step, what would that be? It would be media outlets, news outlets that support Trump. Well, you perpetuated this. You questioned January, or you you support, you made a remark. or even neutral, had a neutral stance on January 6th. Or you questioned the 2020 election. We're going to charge you, too, for seditious conspiracy, we'll say. Well, now beyond that, where do you go? Now you got people like fucking us. That are just out there, like saying, "It's like, well, you also questioned it. Like, how? Where does the? Where do you draw the line? Because if they're doing this and they get away with it, there's no line anymore. It's like well, we're just going to go after our political opponents, right to the bottom. I mean, that's what it boils down to. Sorry to bring you along. <laughs> no, fuck, dude, please. What are you talking about? Strap me to the fucking grill of this bus. You drive, I want to sit on the grill. <laughs> I'll be the fucking emblem. I'll, I'll, you know, you remember how back in the old, in the 90s and the 80s, we need they had the big giant emblems on the hood of the cars? Yeah. I will put that right up my the ass Jaguar. and smile. And sit. <laughs> we need, we need to, we need someone that makes t-shirts out there because we're going to have that t-shirt made. Me driving an old rickety bus like a and made us on the grill. Mad Max, like, and then you on the grill, <laughs> just going through the wall of like whatever. Just at least whoever designs that shirt, <laughs> could you could you make me a little more well endowed? <laughs> could you like give me like put me in some sweatpants and give me like a, <laughs> a huge boner? I just want to feel good about something, <laughs> self image wise. Oh, I'm dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would say it's also dividing the country, but like I said before, the country's so divided already. But then Oliver Anthony comes out and puts that song together and be like, yeah, wait a minute. And there might be enough, but that's just it. That might, that that right there, that's fucked up. I hope, and, and there's still going to be people that are so extreme. There's going to be extreme left, it's not extreme liberal, right. it's, it's leftists that they're going to look at this and be like, Trump's definitely guilty i was like guilty of what well look at all the charges i'm like i see them all what <laughs> there's 96 of them the number doesn't fucking make any difference all right well what what's illegal they? about anything he did well look at the charges yeah. okay he's being charged with questioning the 2020 election what's illegal about that you know what's <laughs> interesting <laughs> i can't hear you i can't you know what's interesting oh about my the god whole thing? where does his head go tim pool said this body's hey. still warm <laughs> I need five minutes. All right. Five minutes alone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tim Pool. Go ahead. Tim Pool said, uh, Trump's going along with all this. <laughs> You're never going to hear that song <laughs> say <it> again. <laughs> uh, Trump's going along with all this, which is interesting because maybe he's playing the whole thing off and just making himself into a martyr. Because this will actually put him behind bars so they'll have that image, which he can still run because until he's prosecuted and charged with on a federal level, he can still run. He can still run behind bars in a county jail somewhere. Interesting. Interesting. 
optics, but it can still happen. But it was brought up is like because Trumpers are going to vote for him no matter what. It doesn't matter. So if he's behind we can't bars, come up with a nickname for Biden voters. Biden nets. Can't say the R word. I have a whole bunch of names, but I'm not going to say any of them. By dinners? Less fortunate. We'll just put it that way. And you put that in any category bidden. of whatever you like want. Like doing my bidding. Bidders? Bidders. <laughs> Bidders. Bidders. <laughs> Trumpers and bidders. <laughs> what a strange time we're in. <laughs> Are but, you a bidder? No, I'm a biter. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, jeez, I don't know. Sucks to be you. I'm a spitter. Motherfucking quitter. Speaking of Hillary. (laughs) Speaking of spitting and quitting. Hurricane Hillary heading towards Southern California. And it was downgraded to a Category 2 now. So she was spitting. Now she's quitting. (laughs) Funny how... uh, Funny how something named after... A former first lady goes from something so terrible to all of a sudden, see, the Democrats control that. Front fart. <laughs> you know what's interesting? <laughs> this goes along with, this goes along with uh, the heart. <laughs> the, go- the government controlling weather. Yeah. And it just so happens to be a rare instance where a hurricane is going up the West Coast. Where's it going? Right toward... Skid Row. Hey, let's name it Hillary. Let's get rid of all these homeless fuckers. <laughs> Cleaned. Hold on. Good job, Hillary. She finally cleaned definitely, up the streets. You, you definitely should have won 2016. <laughs> if that's what you mean. I can't do it still. I don't feel like I'm doing it right. There's a TikTok of her. You, all right. You remember the, the it became a meme after 2016 of her when they release the balloons and her surprise face like oh yeah that there's a tiktok of her face on the hurricane projectory path yeah and she's like going and it, once she hits landmass in california that's when it goes <laughs> i love the internet sometimes I oh really do. <laughs> yeah you're welcome yeah so hillary's cleaning up the streets in southern california at least presumably she's going to and that must be because of global warming yeah definitely because of global warming you mean global boiling yeah (laughs) but now it's called global boiling global boiling there's one i haven't heard that yet no when you sent me that i was like global boiling wait are we not worrying? Uh, so global warming isn't a thing. Now it's something different. Yeah, it says there's one scientist that says we're beyond global warming. Now we're in global boiling. Here's my question to that: Are we really landmass that much hotter than any time before in history? In the last thirty years, we won't even go back that far. No, I don't believe so. You ever watch the news when they're talking about? like a heat wave going through yeah. and they show like the color coordination and this i'm sure you've seen all over before I, I have on my feed they'll have comparisons of like say 20 years ago even yeah, 10 years ago I've they'll be like oh th- we're in a heat wave and they show temperatures and it's like 81 85 90 86 whatever and now you'll see it like all in like the dark reds like oh we're in a heat wave but then you compare it to 10 15 years ago and it's just a normal it's like eh, this is what it's yellow it's I remember summers when I was a kid where it was like we'd have two solid weeks of 95 plus. Mm-hmm. When I used to run all the time, I would wait for those heat waves when it would be like 100 plus degrees in humidity and I would fucking go and run seven miles. And that wasn't that long ago. It was like 10 years ago. Yeah. We haven't had heat waves like that in quite a fucking while. Now, that's not denying any global warming or anything. Or climate change. The point is, is the way the temperatures now are being perceived, they're bolstering it up to be like this is the worst fucking summer we've ever had we had uh four days of 89 it's the hottest 89 on record (laughs) no see here's the thing and i mean this in the nicest way possible i've made this comment many a times before on the show 
we are a parasite. Humans. Oh, yeah, for sure. On this planet. For sure. We are a highly organized, highly cognitive, highly functioning parasite on this planet. The human race. Black, white, yellow, brown, green, orange, red, pink, purple, blue. I don't give a crap. Nature has a way of correcting things, mm -hmm. whether we want it to or not. So and they're sinkholes, earthquakes, um, uh, volcanoes erupting, wildfires, hurricanes, typhoons, space tornadoes, lasers, <laughs> laser blasters, space lasers. Take your pick. Tunguska blaster of nineteen oh eight. There's something we should talk about someday. Anyway, go ahead. I won't refer. I won't refer to it as global warming or global boiling. I will always refer to it as climate change. Right. Because if you do your research, and I have looked up some things in the past about when it comes to climate change, mm. 30 years ago, yeah, we might be a degree or two hotter now than we were back then. 400 years ago, it was probably 10 to 20 degrees hotter then than it is now, yeah. where we're actually in global cooling by all definitions. And then we've had summers. That was in the 70s, remember? Yeah. It's like, we're going to be in a deep freeze. Yep. Remember uh, Leonard Nimoy? Mm -hmm. we'll talk about that in the search of. There's an episode specifically talking about the global cooling. So, what I'm getting at is the climate will always change. Whether it be for the better or for the worse, it will always go up and down. Mm -hmm. It is basically a frequency. Mm -hmm. We will have ups and downs, ups and downs. We've had winters where global warming is so bad global boiling is so bad what did we have two three years ago that we had to send uh fire departments from all around new york state over to what area in our state to go help bail them out because they had like 20 feet of snow buffalo buffalo yeah wasn't that that was just this a couple years ago no not this past winter it was a winter before the winter before yeah 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 because we're like nine, boil. nine feet of snow yeah <laughs> like literally and there are con there's a place in California that gets on average about 20 feet of fucking snow a year. That's all Northern California. Yeah. yeah. But we're in global boiling. So like I said, it's not. I will never refer to it as global warming, global boiling. I will always refer to it as climate change. So this is from The Guardian. <laughs> Era of global boiling has arrived, says UN chief, as July set to be Sorry, the hottest Tourette's. month on record. Oh and my fucking God, bullshit. <laughs> We had, what, fucking 10 years ago, we had 107 degrees. <laughs> this motherfucking summer ain't broke 100 yet. No. The, well, at least it's not here. It did fucking down, weed. It, it did. Uh, Just really need to check out those facts. Down in L.A. I almost said something Or else. L.A., uh, Las Vegas. The mm. era of global warming has ended, and the era of global boiling has arrived. The U.N. Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has said, after scientists confirmed July was on track to be the world's hottest month on record. Climate change is here. It is terrifying, and it is just the beginning. Uh, Guterres says, It is still possible to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 Celsius above pre-industrial levels and avoid the very worst of climate change, but only with dramatic, immediate climate action. Here's the thing. They want to, and we might have said this before. It's been said before. I know that. They want all these Western nations to be climate sensitive and implement all these think green actions, electric, whatever it is. And we've argued to the cows come home. It's like, well, yeah, you want to do this, but look at all the petroleum, whatever. All that is completely pointless. If other nations, <coughs> China, that don't follow this are pumping all that into the atmosphere and completely negating everything we're doing anyway. Now that doesn't mean, oh, we should just fuck it and do whatever. But the point is, is, Everything you want to change, you have to do to where everyone's on board. Because if only half of us are on board, it doesn't fucking make any difference. Because we're still pushing toward all this climate change anyway. Now, my argument is, is I kind of think there's a, a few scientists that think we're still in the cool, or the uh, uh, defrosting, for lack of a better term, stage from the last ice age. Mm. And that's why we're warming up. I was like, oh, that's merited. This was from, what, 12,000 years ago? There's merit Fuels. there. Yeah, it was before. It was last Tuesdayism, where everything before last Tuesday doesn't exist. We're in a simulation. Yeah, but way to fuck it up, Elon. I <laughs> we caught you. 
Yeah, the clouds with the thunder clouds. So we were at, we were thunder at camp, walls, whatever and, they were. Yeah, we were at camp, and there was a thunderheads south. Thunderheads. Of us. And I turn around, I look at the clouds, and I'm like, it, it just looked like someone painted it. It was like yeah. Bob Ross painting. I'm like, they just look so fake. And then a drunk guy walks by, and I'm like, ah, whatever he said. I don't even remember what he said. And I was like, oh, the clouds, they look fake. He's like, ah, yeah. I don't remember anything he said. I don't remember. <laughs> And we weren't. You even, remembered more than I said. We weren't more even. Than he said we weren't even idea. drinking, so I, I just I don't remember anything he said. We were stone sober, high on life. <laughs> <laughs> the steady rise in global average temperatures, driven by pollution that traps sunlight and acts like a greenhouse around the Earth, has made weather extremes worse. Now, to argue what I just said, there's an awful lot of space lasers setting fires all around. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there are a lot of weird environmental anomalies like i mean the wildfires in canada both british columbia and we have wildfires every year we do these are bad maui burning away and no water being anywhere to fight the fires well when the space laser started the fire business they must have also like seared the the, yep. the tubing it evaporated the yeah. Yeah. the uh the water that was in the hydrants and and I guess now they're evacuating British Columbia now, too. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of places that are, like, in extreme condition. And they're not slowing down those fires. That's a whole other thing. that Because Maui blew up, now people are starting to forget about hmm. Canada. It's almost like I said <clears throat> something about nature finding a way to correct itself. Yeah. What's happening? What's going on? Why does everything hate us? Mother Nature is just like, <laughs> I have an itch on my ass. <laughs> oh, another wildfire. Ah. <sighs> Whew, there goes that blemish gone. Yo, you talk about lockdowns. There's, I actually have this thing, uh, climate lockdowns. Um, the UK city defends new climate lockdown policy, a traffic filter program that fines residents for traveling outside their neighborhoods too often is raising eyebrows. Uh, the city of Oxford has embraced the concept of limiting citizens' personnel uh, personal travel to flight climate change, an idea once dismissed as a conspiracy theory. The Oxfordshire County Council's so-called traffic filter system, adopted last week, has gone viral, denounced as the first step toward climate lockdowns by climate skeptics and civil liberties activists. The city will be divided into six 15-minute neighborhoods <laughs> containing all local necessities with residents required to register their cars so they're uh, their comings and goings can be tracked by a network of cameras. They are allowed unlimited movement in their own neighborhood, but in order to drive through the filters, they must apply for a permit. You know what I want to happen? If this does, in fact, happen, I want people, somebody out there, to break down these subsections of this community into income. See if the incomes correlate with how they divide it. The rich people can go out here and here and here, and you guys have to stay in your community. Yeah. <laughs> oh, didn't we talk about something about this before? Yeah. yeah. But whatever. Oxford, <laughs> isn't that not in America? No, it's not. But I mean, you know, let's try it in the shitty place first. <laughs> and then <laughs> You mean DC? That's where we're gonna do it. And that's what, and you fucking know what'll happen. This stuff, if it ends up coming to fruition. It'll come to the United States, and who's the first fucking people that are going to vote it in as a good thing? The fucking... Left-leaning yeah. fucking cities. Yep. That's what. And specifically, D.C., L.A., it'll be... A, a NYC. C, yeah. Chicago. It'll all be places like that. And be like, oh, it's a good idea. That's what'll happen. And then that'll be the next, uh, that'll be the next civil divide. Oh, you're segregating these communities by poverty levels and, and, and color and and uh, resource or fucking whatever. I don't know. I don't know. If that happens, it'll probably be under this administration. Yeah, <laughs> it makes sense. What do you think? Do you think Biden's going to make it to 2024? No. You know, how do you think the what would happen to make him not make it to 2024? Aside from a catastrophic ailment or some shit like that of him just... Oh, you mean like... Oh, like I how would you, they push... Not, I don't want to say push him out, but 
push him out and have someone else step in. Kamala Harris being the next person. I don't think he's going to I don't think he's going to get pushed out. I think he'll make it to the end of his term. But I do not see if Have you seen his latest um he had a uh, started I think it was starting his campaign trail. He had a latest speech he had and all the common tropes of Biden talking from a teleprompter in public were all there. Him lost on stage, leaving the stage while he was reading the teleprompter created a new fucking word if i can find it i'll send it to you it's it's magical please do, please it, it's do. it's all the common things that he does like, but how how is he's just 80 what 81 we said 81 82 81 i think anyway I, I don't understand and he says he's gonna run again his family announced it the poor guy probably doesn't even know what's going on is like <clears throat> right, we got to keep him in office for more years so they had a meeting last what during the Christmas holiday, and like we've decided it's a good idea for him to run again. It's like, can the old man speak for himself? <laughs> yeah, you see, he agrees. He says things like that all the time. That's probably why they fucking put him up there because he has rumblings and jumblings, ramblings and bamblings all the time. So when he just says, Hoy, they're like, that was a yes. <laughs> in Biden's speech, that was a yes. He said up on stage when he was up there, he goes, I know we're all. Uh, just all the kids out there, I know where all the best ice cream places are, and your parents owe you. I'm like, man, with all the shit that people just latch onto, why'd you say that? <laughs> You're just fucking digging your own grave here. And if he doesn't make it to 2024, like if he has to take because of mental capacity, and he's got to take a step to the side, he's got to bow out, Kamala Harris goes in first. Here's the interesting question about that. What's Hillary going to think about that? Because she's not the first acting president. Kamala Harris is. You think that'll burn her the wrong way? No. <laughs> no, because I, I, I wholeheartedly stand by what I've said in the past. Hillary will never acknowledge her as the first. She will support her as the duly acting president. You know, mm -hmm. we have a woman in the office. That's great. She wasn't elected. Exactly. <laughs> she will fucking snail trail all across that fucking Hallmark greeting card. I still have a chance. Congrats no for being a president, but you weren't elected. Snail trail. She, uh... More like dust trail. Her fucking 80-something. <laughs> <sighs> still can't do it. She... <laughs> yeah, I... Well, I mean, anyone that... Let's, let's say she got there bored. We go, well, you'd have to be careful of. I mean, everyone around her seems to hang themselves and shoot themselves in the chest with a shotgun. Hang themselves with an extension cord, uh, and the shotgun somehow ended up thirty feet. If away. you kill one of us, thirty feet away, at least let me get anal slash oral from your daughter. Like, kill me second. Oh my god, that horse face, gremlin. Like I said, Chelsea Clinton. The only trick that oral cause is still constitutes is anal. I'm sorry to Rick Steiner because that's his nickname in pro wrestling, the dog face gremlin. <laughs> I don't want to paint a bad picture on Rick. Yeah, Rick was good, man. <laughs> Rick and Scott. So, segueing 90 degrees. Are young men becoming more conservative? What the heck is happening with young men? To read many informed observers on the subject is to experience whiplash. A new report, The State of American Men 2023, from Confusion to Crisis to Hope, found that more than half of young men believe men have a harder time in America today than women. The report also revealed considerable um, ambulant, um, amb ambivalence about the influence of feminism, particularly among Gen Z men. Gene Twang's book <laughs> generations shows 12th grade boys becoming more conservative jumping about 20 points over the last couple of decades a recent atlantic art article by lyman stone and brad wilcox suggests that single men are slightly more conservative than they once were there is one thing Jesus Christ, I don't know if they're being a Z at the end of his. <laughs> There's one thing I can say with this article of men becoming more conservative is 
in the last few years specifically with all the stuff that we've talked about it's got to be a reaction because later in this, there's someone in here this matthew uh yanglis yanglises no, that young men demonstrate strong democratic commitments in the recent midterm elections, citing ca uh, catalyst data. He shows that nearly 60% of young men voted Democrat in 2022. Young men may vote less Democratic than young women, but these findings are not consistent with the thesis that young men have become more conservative. Uh, he says, my analysis of Gallup surveys shows little change to the political views of young men over the past 20 years. Young men more conservative than liberals... 31% versus 24%, respectively, but a pl uh, plurality, 43%, identify as moderate. The conservative lean a young men is notable, but there's not evidence of rightward drift, so what's going on here? I think because he said more people are identify as moderate and not conservative or liberal, there is, by the chart, more people on the lower end of either that identify as liberal or conservative. It shows more people identifying as conservative, but still moderate are over top of that. Because people have leaned more right in the last few years. I wonder why. I, th well, what's that saying is more people that vote moderate are leaning right, still moderate, like myself. And like, mm, because the left has gone so fucking crazy. All this does is show, like, it shows, um, yeah, a study where it shows exactly what's going on. And it's like, well, there's proof positive. This says ages 18 to 29 who identify as conservative, moderate, and liberal. There's a graph that shows exactly how it says, what I just said. Yeah. Up to, looks like 2022. Jesus. But then added on to that, which I had this discussion before someone else, Like, men now, more conservatively, you remember in the 80s where it was kind of a trope where women would be the ones that want to settle down, and the guy was like, I don't want any of that, and that carried through for years, like, I don't yeah. want to settle down, I want to go have fun, and that for years was like, that's the wrong way to do it, and men were like, oh, men are dogs, men are pigs, blah, blah, blah. and that was like the, the, the label that was given to them, Yeah, and that's the way it was, and now it seems to be the opposite. Like, men just don't want to deal with any of the bullshit. And women are like, I want to be strong, independent, and I want to do this, and I don't want a family until later on in life. That's fine. But the problem is, is now that men are the ones that wanted to settle down and women aren't, they're looking at women and saying, well, you're, cause you're going out there doing all this, like, what used to be fuckboy sh shit, and then expecting everyone to look at that as like, oh, you're a strong, independent woman. It's like, no, you're doing exactly what the guys did 20, 30 20 years, years ago. Now, yeah. The defense is, well, why was it okay for you and not us? My rebuttal is, the problem is, is we're quote, supposed to learn from our mistakes, right? That doesn't mean the opposite party can go and do the same thing because that's not learning from anything. That's just retribution. Or that's a rebuttal. Yeah. So we're not learning anything. It's just the exact opposite. But they're doing it under the guise of strong, independent women. It's like, well, not really. <laughs> well, <laughs> because if that's the case, then men were strong, well, independent men back then, which you wasn't know the what? case. But let me put it into perspective for you. When I say it like this, I think you might, I think you might kind of grasp. Men and women, it's it's doesn't matter what sex you are. I think it's a lot like. It's a generational thing, like parents to children. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say it like that is because, obviously, you have a little. Mm. I have a not-so-little who's into the teens. I can sit there and say, I know what's going to happen. Don't do this. Do as I say. And when I get asked, well, why? Because I did the exact same thing you're probably going to do. Yeah, sit there, say, no, I know what I'm doing, and fuck up. Yeah, but I mean, we all. <laughs> it's a generational thing. And unfortunately, right. like you said, it's being pulled under the guise. It's being covered with the guise of individualism, feminism, independent, whatever. I think 
it's it, it's a it's a twenty to thirty year every generation we have to every twenty to thirty years we gotta fucking watch somebody else make the same mistakes we made mm-hmm. twenty thirty years ago. Mm-hmm. Sit there and be like, well, we did warn you, we did tell you not to fucking do it. We told you don't drink at that party. We told you don't snort that cocaine. We told you don't have sex with the butt. All these fucking things I still regret. I mean, people regret <laughs> doing. You know, I mean, really though, if you look at it on a grand scale. Like that's exactly. dial, dial it back. Look at a micro level. We do the same thing as nations. We're into this three hundred years as this country and mm-hmm. just as society. Well, one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand, and we're still going to wars over the same general things and ideas for instead of spices. Now it's oil, shit you dig out of the ground. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. We haven't learned our lesson. We just happen to make some advancements that covers the whole thing under the Guys, disguise of mm, okay. we're civilized. Mm. But. <laughs> and and what are the fucking 80, 90 year old people saying to us right now? Don't fucking do it. We fucking been there. Don't fucking do it. Yeah. You're going to fuck. Ah, oh, they fucked up. Fuck it. We're, we're good. Uh, and the proof is in the pudding. There's only you can't there. fucking you can't shred that shit and make it disappear. No, it fucking keeps happening. See what I did there? Yeah, like like the Jan Six documents. That yeah, have been shredded. It's funny that all of a sudden you know Trump's getting what he wanted and everything to go through a legal system where everything can now be viewed and poof, shit disappears. Yeah, because they said, oh, we didn't know we had to hold it. Yeah, we didn't know we didn't know we needed to save our proof. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah, that was our proof we destroyed. I sound like fucking sloth from fucking the Goonies. Yeah, but at least he had a good heart. <laughs> you can have my heart. <laughs> what, you say I don't? <laughs> Fuck you. <sighs> my heart works One, for I, It's a little I, slow from time to time. I, 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 I want to <laughs> end on a random. You want to end on a random? That's end on a random. All right. These ones give me the boners. From the New York Post. Skeptics stunned by resurfaced video of Bigfoot in Mississippi woods. Oh, my God. <laughs> Best footage footage ever recorded. Best footage ever recorded. <laughs> Bigfoot, is that you? <laughs> Incredible video that seemingly shows a Sasquatch darting through the woods of Mississippi is going viral, with some saying it's the best footage of the creature ever captured. <laughs> The video was recorded oh, by yeah. Josh Highcliffe, who posted it on YouTube back in 2015, <laughs> where it was clocked up more than 118,000 views. In a caption beneath the two-minute clip, Highcliffe explained that he came across the creature ripping back off a tree trunk and throwing it to the ground. He aided he was... Why is this thing keep popping up? Afraid of the because hairy beast. Touching it. Leave it alone. That's true. Af- of, of the hairy beast stumbling across the... On a hunting trip, I was out hunting hogs, just sitting in a part of the oh, swamp. He was doing the bar crawl. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's terrible. High Cliff explained. I'm out hog sin- <laughs> You're at a bar. <laughs> I do. Look at before that boy. Saying, <laughs> before saying he had heard a noise behind a tree. When I got around, I could not believe my own two eyes. There was this huge black thing crouched by a dead cypress about 50 yards away. Oh, he must have been. <laughs> it was a hog, but saw this big shoulders and head upright with hands. The hunter, <laughs> the hunter continued. It looked like it was just digging out a stump. My first instinct was to run. I did not think of shooting. <laughs> the Mississippi man alleged that he had, the creature was seven feet tall and did not remotely resemble a bear. I can't. All I can think of right now is, hi, my name's Casey. I'm a baddie from Jersey. <laughs> oh, Tompu <laughs> Gadika. <laughs> I did not think of shooting it. <laughs> oh, jeez. I didn't shoot it, but I shot in it. I don't know what to think, he wondered. Asking if viewers could decipher the breed of the beast. <laughs> Many took the comments section to express their astonishment of the footage with many believing it was Bigfoot. This is by far... What if it was her? Seven, eight years ago. Before 
She, the, the, that was pre-op. That's why she looks like she does post-op. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, wait, what? Oh, That's the footage? Solo. <laughs> That's Shaq. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> he's saying it's Shaq because he's got a big dog. Look at us swinging there. You look at this. Otobuka <laughs> Bye. Later, fuckers. <laughs>